looking at expected value, um, there's a few problems for you in the workbook. Uh, keep in mind that this is probably going to be in the next video, because it does get more complex. So it's really just that page and a bunch of really good problems in the textbook to look at, not to mention Stats LC. So there's not much in your workbook actually, so you'll probably want to look at Stats LC and the textbook a bit. Um, additionally, what is expected value? Well, it is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's um, what you would expect to get, or the expected value that might you might happen. So, this is what is likely to happen. And it can often be used to find things like the mean, or an average outcome for a distribution. It's also a good method for finding a standard deviation if you need to. So if we take a look at an example, pull three coins from a bag full of coins. There are three $1 coins and two $2, two $2 coins, and you're allowed to draw a coin, draw three coins from the bag, one at a time without replacement. So you reach your hand in, grab a coin, assume you can't tell the difference by touch between a $1 and a $2 coin, put it in your pocket, and do that two more times until you get three coins in your pocket. So if you want to imagine that, we can, in a way, imagine a little bag. You've got your three little $1 coins and two big $2 coins. And we want to uh, construct a probability distribution table for the total value of the three coins that end up in your pocket. So a distribution table, the top row is always the outcomes. And this is what is possible. So in this case, how many different values, like how many different possible ways can you draw those three coins, like what, how much money is that in your pocket? And the bottom row is always going to be the probability. So if we were going to do this, um, one thing that might be helpful is to do a probability tree. And I've kind of done one already. Uh, so let's just take a look at that, save the time of trying to write it all out. So, if I think about my different options here, I have the option of picking a $1 or $2 coin, and each time I pick a coin, the probability kind of drops off. So if I do a $1 coin, I've taken out one of the $1 coins, I'm down to only two of them out of the four total coins that are left in the bag. And one thing to watch for here is this last option, $2, $2, $2. That's not possible, because you only have two $2 coins, so you can't actually get that last one there. So the different values we can get out of this would be a 1 and a 1 and a 1. That would be $3. You can also get 1, 1, and 2 is $4. And if you go through looking at these, you can see that we've got three possibilities for values. $3, $4, or $5 showing in the tree. You can get two $2 coins and a $1 coin, or two ones and a 2, or three ones. So my possibilities here are going to be $3, $4 and $5. And I need to figure out the probabilities of these. So, little reminder for you in probability trees, you want to times along the branches, so 3 fifths times 2 fourths times 1 third is going to get us a probability, if you do it in your calculator, of 0 0.1. And same idea, timesing along the tree, to get a 4 is going to be something like 0 0.2 when you times those three fractions together. And it actually works out that you get the same values for each of those fours. So those are all a 0 0.2 chance. And for the five, one times in the probabilities, three over five, two over four, and one third. In this case, you get 0 0.1. And it is the same for all three of your options for the fives. And then remember with probability trees, if there's more than one option you want, at the end you add them up. So the probability of getting a $3 outcome, that only happens once, so that's 0 0.1. The probability of getting a $4 outcome, that happens one, two, three times, so 0 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.2 is equal to 0 0.6. And for the $5 outcomes, 0.3, or sorry, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 equals 0 0.3. So when we're trying to find our um, or be able to answer the questions for this, we're going to take a look at um, kind of using the table to our advantage. 
So in this case, what is the probability of getting at least a four dollars, or at least four dollars into your pocket? So at least four, that means four or five. So right, four or five dollars. And in my table, I can just add those values up. 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3 equals 0 0.9. I have a 0 0.9 percent or yeah 0 0.9 chance of getting at least four dollars four or five dollars what is the probability of getting less than five well that doesn't include five that's the three or four dollars option 0 0.1 and 0 0.6 have a 0 0.7 for that happening and then here what is the expected amount of money you will draw from the bag so how much money on average if I you know let every single student in my class do this I had a bunch of coins and put them into the bag starting with three ones and two twos every time how much money would those students on average have in their pockets after the end of this so to find the expected value what we're going to do is take a look at timesing the probability times the outcome and then add all together. Our calculators will do this for us too, but let's do it manually once so you see what's happening. So now, I, in a sense, I'm timesing these numbers together and then I'm adding them up. So my expected value it's going to be 3 times 0 0.1 plus 4 times 0 0.6 plus 5 times 0 0.3. So again, I'm timesing top to bottom and then adding up all the numbers as I get them. And if I put those all together into my calculator, you should get 0 0.420. So the expected value that I would get here is equal to four dollars and twenty. Now that might seem a bit weird because there's no way in this experiment for somebody to get four dollars and twenty cents in their pocket but remember it's an average so it's okay it doesn't have to be three four or five it's saying if I averaged everybody's pocket change after this I would get roughly four hundred sorry four dollars and twenty cents in everybody's pocket. So if we think about interpreting this we're basically going to put into words what I just said. So, this is the mean or an average um, winnings for this game or this coin bag trick. So, no one can actually win exactly four dollars and twenty cents but over time on average with lots of trials Um, we can expect on average four dollars and twenty in everyone's pocket. So again the winnings there are just going to be on average four dollars and twenty so that's what you can expect to win another way to just write that shortly you can expect to win four dollars and twenty each time you play now we know with randomness and probability it's not going to be four dollars and twenty you could play fifty times in a row and only get three or five dollars but on average it should work out that way kind of theoretically. So if I want to calculate the standard deviation I am actually going to get us to use the calculator at this point. Now at the bottom of this page um, you've got some information 
this is on the formula sheet. So this is what's given to you. And the good news is, if you don't like algebra or it scares you looking at this stuff, um, your calculator will do it all for you. But this is your mean or expected value, the e of x. And this here, your standard deviation. as well. So if you're needing that, that's available for you. So what you guys are going to do is go into your calculator and if you go into stat um, you want to make sure that you enter in the values. Uh, so these are the outcomes that you put into the first row and these are the probabilities that you put into the second row. Now I'll show you the next step because it's a little bit different. So once you've got those probabilities entered, the next thing you're going to do is hit calc. Oops. So you're going to hit calc, which is here. And then you need to pause and go into set. And make sure in this case that you set your list up so that it says list 1 in the first spot and then says list 2 in the second spot. Because now it's going to look for values in list 1 and list 2 and combine those together to give you your information. So again, get it to list 1 and list 2. Once you've done that, execute. And then from here, it's variable 1, or 1 var. So like I've said here, calc, set, make sure it's in the right order, list 1, list 2, and then that. And now we've got our information. So all of this comes out to us. Now our mean is the x bar, and our standard deviation is going to be the x sigma n. So That one is your mean, or your expected value, and this guy here, that's your standard deviation. So, so you can see that big, um, that's your mean, or expected value, and the x sigma n is equal to your standard deviation. Or as we use in our formula, just that symbol there. So because we used a calculator here to find out the standard deviation and the mean, um, you can use that anytime. You don't have to go through and do it by hand, unless for some reason you need to work out a more complex problem that requires that. So what I would put here, my standard deviation is equal to 0 0.60. So that's also in money, 0 0.60. So 60 cents is your standard deviation. So that kind of describes the variation from pocket to pocket about how much variation we might see. Okay, so again, in your calculator, go into stat, put in your outcomes and your probabilities, hit calc, set it to list one, list two. Once you've done that once, it should stay there for you. And then you've got three, four, five, and one, you know, probabilities and whatnot. And then it's um, variable one and that will get you to the last bit of information that you need. So again, basically what that's doing is it's timesing the outcome by the probability and adding all the different ways that it can work out times their probabilities and giving you an average or what you might expect to have happen. So that's your basics for expected value. Um, in the next video I'm going to look at some um, still, I guess, in the basics category but more complex ways about going that they might ask you to solve and think about expected value. So good to watch as well. But this will get you started for some practice on page um, 122, I think it was. So.